Oh, I, my legs aren't shaved enough to do that with it. Sorry. Disagree. I'm going to do I it. Mean, I mean, I'm going to do it instead. Rough. They're rough. It's, I got a five o'clock shadow. I your, wish. Your ankle has never looked more progressive. That is Thank the most so feminist much. ankle I've ever seen. Thank you so I've much. You should see seen. my armpits. <laughs> <laughs> Are we rolling still? Because that would be so. great. I don't mind. Katie Nolan, Kevin Clark. Uh, I, I need to say this because I've been shamed before about not saying it. Today is my birthday. Happy birthday, Pablo. We just had cupcakes. We did. I did. We did. Um, I, I've been a guy who... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. Katie did <laughs> share. Not a me. Breakfast sandwich. Not me. You were offered them. Yeah. I did. I did get half of your breakfast sandwich. Happy birthday for me. What'd you get him? I got him a cake pop and half of my breakfast sandwich. I was sandwich. here when we sung happy birthday to him. I was outside the door. I couldn't get in. <laughs> because though I've been on this podcast three times now, I don't have a badge. Katie Why Nolan would they give you a badge? Does deserve a badge. Because I don't work here. No, you should yeah, deserve a badge I know. and a gun. <laughs> That's right. Um, happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to you. How old are you? I'm 38. Okay, so it's, it doesn't really matter. No. Yeah, it's, it's, not, a big it's one. not. We got two years to plan you the big one. Right. Mm-hmm. It doesn't feel like anything's really changing. Mm. Um, the, the growth is honestly that I am saying it out loud because historically I'm a person who's like, try, I don't, I'm not trying to test people. Mm. Mm. It felt like a test went on. Uh, you had asked me to do this on Thursday, and then you said, oh, just kidding. Can we actually do it on Wednesday? And I almost said, like, your birthday? Mm. And then I was like, no, don't say it. And then you can just surprise him by knowing it and make him feel loved. And then I woke up to a text from Lebetard anyway that it was your birthday, so even if I hadn't known. Dan texted I you? Oh, Dan No, he tweeted. This. No, that's what I meant. He tweeted okay. that video and that I'm tagged Oh, yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know why I have to be embarrassed on your birthday, but... I, I, I didn't like that video. Mm. It wasn't a good look for you. No. You don't come off we're not looking... Gonna, we're going to not play that video. I what presume. if we played it? Let's what take a look. I believe, yeah, we have the clip. Here is the I believe video. we have a clip. Let's nope. take a look. Here it is. Stop throwing to stuff if on my show. If we could take a look, let's pull that up. I really don't like it when people throw to... No. No. Don't play. Okay, good. He's going to... They're going to they're no, do, do it in post. post. Obviously, they don't have it CGI. ready to go. That's my fault. I should have sent that let's to you guys. Start, let's start the show. Kevin Clark, you're Hi. making your debut. <gasps> I'm so happy to be here. Katie Nolan is is like a veteran at this. I feel whatever at share and tell. She just mostly feels whatever. Sure. Um, it's getting hard to find things to share and tell. I haven't had this many things to tell in a long time. Well, I think we should start with Katie. Why? Mm. Yes, because Kevin Clark is. I mean, you have a new job. Mm-hmm. You work for ESPN and Omaha Productions. I do. I host a show called This Is Football. Already you promoting. I didn't. I didn't ask you to promote it just yet. Well, What's it on? Where do I find it? Uh, you can find it wherever you get your podcasts okay. or the ESPN NFL YouTube page okay. and other ESPN social platforms. Okay. Kevin is a football expert, mm. and Katie Nolan just had one hell, one hell of a football weekend. I would say seventy points. Seventy points. What for was a that? team I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> for a team that's in, so um, you know, well, this. do you have I'm to sure start you know liking them? Um, no. Okay. I have, I, so actually, explain, explain for the people who have I've, not right. seen all three. Everybody's got to know, and I'm sick of saying his name on podcasts. I have a fiance. His name's Dan. He is. Uh, he was middle school best friends with Mike McDaniel, now the head coach of the Miami Dolphins. So from like, a, if you step back from that, if you're not, if you're sick of hearing the story, the sweet thing about it is like these are two kids who were friends in middle school, mm-hmm. and then now are both doing the thing they would have always wanted to do yes. at the top of it. And it's very, very, very cool. However, when Mike McDaniel was going to go somewhere to be a head coach, I said specifically, as long as it's not in the AFC East. Yeah. He and didn't then listen. He didn't, um, which is fine. But now I am um, going to tons of— I'm going to more Dolphins games than Pats games by a lot. Um, and it's, it's um, fun. It's football, so it's fun. But it's also, at the same time, you're just like, man— um, this isn't my team, and my team's not really doing anything similar. I mean, they won this well, week. Well, in fact, your team, through not just the first three games of the season, but the first four games of the— well, actually, 
not just the first three games of the season, but when you combine it with the last preseason game, mm. they have not yet scored as many points as the Dolphins scored mm. oh, you did against the, math. the Broncos. Oh, you did the math. At the that's, game that you were a uh, VIP very at. Nice. That's very nice of you to do that math. Thank you. Yeah. The game that I um, was watching while also watching the Patriots on Red Zone because I'm like, this is I, they're going to win, so this isn't really a close game. So the night before, we were at the McDaniels mm. Space House. I always say their house looks like a spaceship. It's so nice and modern Wait, and fancy. Please, it's please. It's a space house. I don't want to talk too much about I don't know them like that. <laughs> like Dan can do that and then they can be like, hey, don't. I don't want to reveal too much. Okay, but it's so just I'm envisioning, rich people. I'm envisioning like, like Apollo 11. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, um, it's like uh, everything's a built-in. You know, so like you don't ever see any of their stuff and then they push the wall and it opens and you're like, oh, that's a deep closet. I would never have suspected. Did they buy it from somebody or did they design the space house? I think they may have. They're in the process of redesigning it. But weirdly, I thought they had designed it, but I guess not. They must have bought it. That's a coach always tinkering. Always yeah, tinkering. That's for sure. The next innovation. But it's it looks future. like a house that the most futuristic yes, innovator very, in the NFL like a, would like a black, a black Mirror house where, every, like, for some yeah, reason, if you everybody be in Black really Mirror. dark about it, yes. Well, no, they all have like these glass houses that cost eleven million dollars, and it's always like, oh, I'm an sh- I'm an insurance I'm an insurance adjuster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's all my Instagram likes is just these houses, incidentally. Mm. So we were there that night, the night before, watching. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't the night before. Okay. It was Thursday. Okay. <laughs> so it's like we were watching Thursday night football, you know, as you do on Saturday. <laughs> we went over on Thursday when we got there. Sure. And um, and Katie, uh, Bunny, Mike McDaniel's wife, came out and said, what? I'm just acknowledging the first name basis. Yeah. It's Bunny. Katie. It's Katie. Yeah, well, I don't but know where Bunny, Bunny comes from. Okay. They, I call her, they call her Bunny so that we don't get confused, but it not that she had the name Bunny first. I just, that's why I call her. You Alfred I Mike McDaniel's tell, no, wife no, 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 upon no, no, arrival no. I would like to be very clear. House. That's not what happened. What I meant was, it's easier when Dan calls her Bunny because then I, he doesn't always say Katie and people think he's talking about me. And so now I call her Bunny. And then as I said Bunny, I was like, am I supposed to tell people her name's Bunny? I can't explain why her name's Bunny. Can I move on from this? I'm so nervous You're, to be talking about this lovely family. Absolutely. But Katie came out. And said, do you need any dolphin stuff for the game on Sunday? Mm, And I immediately, my shoulders went up and like I looked at Dan. Because you know when you're, remove the Mike McDaniel of it all. You know when Mm -hmm. you're like with your uh, persons, people that you want to impress. Like you want to seem like a good, you know, partner to that Mm -hmm. person and, and whatever. And so I just immediately was like does he need me to say yes to this? And so I like (laughs) looked at him with a look that was like, I don't want to, do I have to? And I just went, and he didn't give me anything. He was just looking at me like, what's she? Dan just looks at me like, what's she going to do in this situation? (laughs) And I was like, help, 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 help. So then I just went, do I have to? And she said, no. And I was like, okay, cool. Then absolutely (laughs) not. Uh, And she said, it's a whiteout. So we wore white. You're watching the Dolphins score 70 points against the team that your Dan and Mike McDaniel grew up in the same city as. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. McDaniel was a ball boy. Everybody knows the story by now. The TV version of this was very funny to me. I assume to Kevin as Mm -hmm. well. At some point, you just start laughing. Yes. But you're there in person watching it. Like, what what are you and Dan doing as this is unending? Drinking? No, we don't do that. Okay. You're super stoned. Uh... Alle- allegedly. <laughs> In the state of Florida, allegedly. Right. Illegal. I know. It's shocking. The most shocking thing every Sports time. Sports gambling and weed. It's, what are we doing? Everything anyway. is legal down there. I know. Scamming is legal. That's right. Just There's don't statutes, smoke weed. Statutes legalizing Ponzi schemes, mm-hmm. but don't smoke weed. Mm. So we were, um, we what we were doing was uh, laughing at Dan's friend, Chad, mm-hmm. who had come yeah. from Denver, because as you said, Dan grew up in Denver, so the Broncos are the team that Mike, a young Mike McDaniel and a young Dan Soder were watching that was in their hometown. But Mike McDaniel's now a head coach, so you're not assuming he's a Broncos fan. That doesn't mm-hmm. matter. And Dan was always a 49ers fan, so he's not a Broncos fan, right. so this didn't hurt that way. But their third friend, Chad, who also came to the game with his lovely wife, Jenna, Chad is a Broncos fan. Oh, Chad. Chad has always been a Broncos fan. So Chad was watching. Chad it would be hell. like watching Dan watch the, the Dolphins like do this to the 49ers. It would just be a different level of... And so Chad was uh, having a tough time watching it unfold in the suite of the head coach of the team that was absolutely embarrassing. Was Chad wearing pity, pity Dolphins gear? No, Chad wore, I believe, all white. 
mm. because it was a white. We all got away with it because it was a whiteout, so you didn't have to like show any sort of allegiance. But this is my question for Kevin: Are we all just Chad now? Like, are we all just watching our teams yeah. get destroyed by the greatest offense in the history of football? Seriously, so, uh, yeah. So I don't know how you stop it. Um, the motion rates are insane. It's a very Mike McDaniel runs what a souped up five year old would run. Which is like fast guy. If you asked a five year old who's watched like 10 games, like, what should we do with football? He'd be like, let's get a bunch of fast guys and let's do a lot of confusing shit before the snap. And then we'll just go from there. And that's really pretty much the, the basis of it the, the, the bedstone and uh, bedrock. And um, it's working. And they have the fastest people in football. They, they just combined them. Um, yes. Jalen Water wasn't even playing on Sunday. And it seems wild. to not matter. Absolutely um, wild. I've never seen anything like this as far as the speed and like same. Bar- Bar- Barnwell um, and I were on a show, a show together a couple days ago and he was like, well, 2018 Chiefs, uh, 20, 2007 Patriots, which Katie remembers. Uh, those teams didn't even score 60. And, and now we're at 70. Now it takes the institutional rot on the other side of the field. I was going to um, say, is it worth <laughs> noting that the Broncos are a mess? I can't believe I, Sean Payton just might not be into this. He just might not be into this. He might just be like, You think this ah. is a cry for help? I kind of. Well, he was like, well, also even afterwards, it was so fatalistic. He was like, you know, I've, sometimes you just get your butt whipped in the NFL, but this is not that. And nobody was like, then well, what, then is, what it? is this? Then what is this? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Is this you just being like, What I, is beyond butt whipping? Yeah. I, I don't, I, I don't know. So um, we're just going to see this. It's not going to be I'm like the Patriots, Katie's Patriots. Um they they put up a fight. They had Christian Gonzalez on Tyreek Hill. It seemed to work a little bit. Um, they could have won that game. Some special teams uh, earlier helped. this season. Yes, yeah, two weeks ago. Um, and so I don't I don't think that they're going to go like seventeen and zero or whatever and just romp to the Super Bowl. I mean, it reminds me actually a little bit of the beginning of the Lamar Jackson MVP year, where guys didn't know what to do. And I remember going to Baltimore that year and some of the tight ends were telling me that like there were linebackers on the other team that would just look over to their, their, uh, their coaches and just be like, what do I do? And they're like, I don't know. Dad? (laughs) Yeah. Like, what do I do? (laughs) These little kids looking up. "Ah." Yeah. And so it just, I I think a lot of times, especially in the NFL, there's a shock to the system for like two months. And then we figured out guys get, well, that's, that's the question, right? Guys get banged up. You get the tape, Kevin, you slice up the all 22 and you adjust. I the a lot of teams like by the way we talked about the 07 Patriots they did lose and they almost lost to the Giants in week 17 of of the regular season oh, as did. well um and then they lost to the Giants That in the must Super have Bowl. been painful. <sighs> um, Why are we doing this? Cuz they were an also, also a good offensive team. Yeah. The yeah. then greatest offense we had ever seen. Mhm. By by a significant I'm degree. I'm interested to know your answer to a question can I ask it yeah, of you? Yeah. How many good coaches are there in the NFL right now? <laughs> I think usually seven? like, 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 like eight or nine. We're still like saying eight Belichick's nine. good. Yeah, he, he yes. is. Okay, he is. All right. he is. Okay, um, but like eight or nine typically. And then there's a bunch of guys who are just kind of system dependent. Uh, do they have health? Do they have a good roster that year? And there's four or five guys who just can't coach. Like I don't think Brandon Staley is capable of anything. Right, with the Chargers. <gasps> yeah. The, the sort of the shines come off of the analytics sort of mm. darling aspect. Well, he doesn't even do, well, he got back into analytics on Sunday. He he killed analytics last year. Oh, that's and right. And now he's back into analytics. But, but speaking of which, like Mike McDaniel, though, atop like the power pole of both uh, coaches in the NFL right mm-hmm. now, but also nerds. Actual nerd. An not, all-time not, not, nerd. Not fake nerd. Yeah. Because there's a lot of the, this guy's just a football dork. And it's like, yeah. okay, it's just because they study military history and they don't shower for four days in a <laughs> row. And it's like, no, Mike McDaniel is a legitimate, like, he is the first Reddit coach, I think. Um, and I'd say a couple things. I, I'll put it to you because you know him. I've, I've, I don't. I've, I've met him less than five times. You pressed his cabinets, Katie. You, you have pressed his cabinets. He comes you. home, he goes, he does this, and we talk for three minutes, and he goes to sleep. You said the word bunny. <laughs> On this podcast. Did, and I'm I'm True. really regretting it. <laughs> Truly. I'm it never seems gonna to be invited back to this ship. The only two things he does is vape <laughs> and come up with unguardable place. Is that accurate? King the in thing. other words. Is there a third thing Mike McDaniel does? I don't I don't think so. You it's I don't know. It it seems um it seems unsustainable. Does it feel that way to you? Or can we can we get ahead of where this conversation why, why is, is it going? Unsustainable? Because scoring seventy, well, yeah, is they're literally not going to score historic. seventy points every single week, but that they also aren't, they aren't going to have well, Sean but, but, Payton on the other is, side but, but, having but, an existential uh, crisis. But I say it's unsustainable because, according to the DraftKings sportsbook, the Bills are two and a half point favorites. 
this weekend. Mm -hmm. So I think it's I think it's a mixture of a lot of things. Um, the game is not Miami, where famously the heat was such on. It was so hot. So it was last so year, hot last year. God bless him. But last year the Bills lost. Oh, to this Miami. was a thing about the and, sun. And one of a couple. I, I this is actually like a couple of like prominent Bills bloggers actually said. This is when I, I knew the Bills were eliminated from Super Bowl contention. <laughs> is they were like we should call the like the labor National Labor Relations Board because this, Miami is an unsafe work environment after the game because it was mm. like so hot on the field and Buffalo couldn't adjust to it. And I was like, this is. To be you're, fair. I've seen enough. You're, you're I've calling, seen enough. You're calling uh, the socialist manager on me? You, that, literally, that's. I saw a couple tweets like that last this time last year, and I was like, "This, I've seen enough. 80% humidity, though, is should be illegal. That, that, can, that gets all up in It's too in much. Person. I went down there just to, you know, before the game, and I was like, anyone running around in this is out of their mind. I like it. I grew up down Disgusting. there. Why are we burying the lead on Kevin Clark saying that he likes swamp yeah, as his resting state? So the other thing that brings us here today mm. is um, the fact that I read this article in the New York Times. And the article was... <laughs> It's an article that I am always self-conscious about talking about on this show because it's the genre of there's this thing happening on TikTok mm -hmm. and you should know about it. And Katie is already Mr. Burnsing because this is her wheelhouse as well. But it's also Kevin Clark's wheelhouse because the story is titled, If I Embarrass My Baby on TikTok, Will He Stay My Baby Forever? Mm. And it's about how there are these uh, trends on TikTok in which and maybe you've seen them, in which parents are throwing slices of cheese at the faces of their kids. Why? And cracking eggs on the heads of their babies. And it is wildly popular, in part because it seems like, this is, this is uh, I guess, news. When you throw a slice of cheese at a baby, they will do something funny. Mm. And I took from this article um, something that I, I'm not proud of, but the instinct to figure out how to monetize my child. <laughs> Truly. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to throw the cheese. I, I'm not going to crack the egg. Can I stop you there? If you throw something at a baby, whether it's cheese or not, they'll react in an unusual way. Because mm -hmm. they're babies and they're not. So I think also, his you, point is throw bigger stuff at yeah. your baby. Mm. Or, or get also bigger like, reactions. You know who notes. reacts when you throw stuff at them? Any human. I don't know. Let's find out. Kevin Clark, uh, baby defense attorney. <laughs> <laughs> Now listen, <laughs> my client I has say a lot reacts. of reactions. Babies can beat the the weird reaction to cheese allegations. Mm -hmm. Like this is not abnormal. But what is abnormal and yet totally normalized mm -hmm. is the idea that there are kids out there, mm -hmm. like the unboxing kid. Mm. You familiar with this kid, uh, Ryan's Toys, who may you now mean be this a tiny billionaire. I was going to say this, who, who may not now be 19 years old and a billionaire was making like NBA max contract money mm -hmm. annually because he was opening toys, which is crazy because opening toys is already the cool thing. Yeah, I was and you're say. making more money off of doing the right. thing you love like, to do. Yeah, right. It's to do what you love and you never you know work a day in your life. That Ryan's Toys, he's just making 30 million dollars. Wild. Opening toys. The unboxing, by the way, to get on a something of a tangent about this, because I'm fascinated by that. Mm. There is something to the idea of like vicariously living through your child. And not just um, as a parent, but like vicariously living through a child who is opening a box full of toys. But And I get that. But I, for me, it's like by the time I watch that child, who I now know is a millionaire— open his 79th gift even. Mm -hmm. I think 79 is my ceiling. I'm like, okay, I've seen this kid's reactions. I don't care. He's not going to give it's me so pure popular. unbridled joy every time. That's totally the part that you. I don't understand. Totally it's like, why don't, I can't understand wanting to see a child experience that joy, but the same child experience that same joy three times a week for seven years. What's the, what are we doing? I got bad news for you. Yeah, it's people love it. Doesn't matter what you think. I know. Because this is wildly popular. And it feels psychological. It feels like anthropological too. Like, okay, well, so you think about it, we're we... like vicariously participating in capitalism in through childhood. this child. Yeah, a child's idea of what it means to be um living the dream. Like and and this and the spontaneity, the surprise of like what's in the box. Mm -hmm. We gotta find out what's in the box. But if you think about it, like cooking shows 
like chopped or whatever, we don't get to eat that food. So we're living, technically living vicariously through them too. Yes. We're watching them make it and then we never get to eat it. And so, like that should seem, I would think to the generation yeah. that is in the same position to us as we are to the generation we're talking about. But aren't, they'd be like, it, why would you? Isn't all TV living vicariously? Well, there's a question I don't think there's we have no, time for. There's nothing that like gets delivered to you at the end of it. Yeah, no, I guess. Like, you but don't it, get the thing on Pawn Stars. But you can see the, um, uh, yes, you do, if you call. Um, call who? I don't know. You see, <laughs> if uh, Project Runway, you get to see the outfit. Yeah, but you don't get the outfit. No, I know, but you don't need to get the outfit to appreciate the outfit. Whereas, like, the food, I, I have no... I have no idea what that tastes like. I can see what it looks like. I have no idea what it tastes like, what you made. None. And I'll never know. I have a friend who worked at a reality TV company, and they said that one day, and they make all these different shows, and they said that one day someone ran from their office in New York City. They run out into the sort of newsroom, I guess you could call it, and they just screamed, ghosts are real. Hmm? And then they went back in. I, I have a ghost take. Where are we going? Do you want I to just, hear my ghost it's take? It's a reality show discussion that I thought that uh, would, I would puncture with Ghost to Real, but now he has a ghost take. I have a ghost now, take. Now we're off to the races. I would love ghosts to be real because then I grew up Catholic. Mm -hmm. Then I could finally believe that, like, in my objective mind, that God is real. Wait, yeah, that's a pretty mainstream take. Wait. You're a, You do not read as a Catholic Yankee fan growing up. I am both of those things. My, the priest of my parish was the Yankees team chaplain. I have what? an autographed Derek Jeter spring training pamphlet that he addressed to Pablo Tor, oh. which was dis disheartening because my last name is the same last name as his f manager. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's on the other hand, Joe Tory, if you're signing to a kid, don't hard. put a last name. Yeah. Who, what yeah. kids don't have last names? The resale value on this pamphlet is very low, is my point. But ghosts are real, I hope, because then all things yeah. are possible. But isn't... I don't want to sound stupid, so maybe I should just leave it. But isn't aren't you not supposed to believe in? Go aren't those yeah. two things at odds? Technically, if you were a devout Catholic, I, I don't think you I, believe in yeah, the paranormal. I agree. But I, I mean, I get what you're. I understand what you're saying, like on a base level. But I don't. Pablo think wants to know there's something there. There's just something there. Yeah. The two plus two equals five. Sometimes. Yes. Yes. And theologically speaking, does the Catholic Church abide by the existence of ghosts? I don't think. No. Mm. I don't think. I think it's seen as the occult. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to call my 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 priest. Okay. It just seems like it would be outside. <laughs> it would be outside the boundaries of what of what the belief system is. If, right. I if think you I think if ghost. you're going by its strictest, I don't even think yoga is chill by Catholicism. In terms of what I'm supposed to do with my child, mm -hmm. faith aside, mm -hmm. how much I'm supposed to do with her in public that is both um, accruing to my self interest, right? Like you, this is a story in the New York Times about. Parents figuring out that children are content and that this is not just like, oh, a, a wonderful memory we can treasure together forever, but also like, oh, there's, this is doing something for people. And I wonder, Kevin, as a new dad, mm -hmm. what is your strategy with child content? Non-existent. So I have two Instagram accounts, as I think you know. Uh, one is for is for private, my friends and family. One is for content, this sort of shit, right? When we, when I don't we take think a that photo. private one follows when, me. I don't think we follow each other on that mm. private one. I think I'm just. I follow you. You don't follow me back. Oh. No, I think, it's oh, because, I think it's because it's really hard for me to be like, here's my private account, follow me back. Okay, but It'd do that really today hard. so that yeah, I okay. can make sure I, okay. You got to see Teddy. Um, other folks cannot, cannot, see Teddy. cannot see Teddy, nor nor will they ever. Part of that is uh, that my wife works for the Wall Street Journal, uh, investigates and publishes stories on very powerful people. Occasionally, she gets some blowback on that and pretty significant, I wouldn't say threats, but, you know, th people dig in. Right, you know? an actual journalist. Yeah, and, like, even the other day, somebody came after me because I said something, I said Ryan Day was soft for getting in a fight with 86-year-old Lou Holtz, and, like, so the, immediately, there's one picture of kind of the back of Teddy's head on my Twitter, <gasps> and immediately there were, like, three Ohio State fans being like, he looks like the <gasps> mailman, bro. Um, and so, like, you just have to get used to that kind of stuff. <gasps> and so... That Teddy will never be focused, uh, will never be the focal point of anything content wise. So, wait, you've including made the, decision. the fact he is incredibly like Gerber baby cute, fat cheeks. This is the thing. Her, he looks like the, the dictionary definition of a baby. This a woman at Target who works at Target the other day came up to him and said, Hey, fat baby, just out loud. <laughs> <laughs> PH. Mm. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Just the and she didn't even know she was getting an exclusive. She got to see that baby's That's face. That's exactly right. The. <laughs> 
The decision you've made already to say, Nobody I'm never going to show the, this yeah. kid to anyone is not the decision that I made. Oh, we're doing this. Oh, my God. This, you can swipe, too. Oh, my God. Katie, oh, Katie, oh, so Katie Nolan is looking at Kevin Clark's cell phone for the podcast I audience. really like that sweatshirt. Too. And I'm going to be honest with you, Kevin. Before I even see this, I'm going to say this baby is cute, and you could be showing me a picture of Skyline Chili. Yeah, like I'm just going to have to say this is it's cute a very now. Cute baby. Honestly, though, that, that's that's it's cute baby. So, but this is a, so Kevin Clark's authentically Don't cute let baby it be on the <laughs> is the dilemma here, right? Because I want to see that content. Because right. it's daring you mm -hmm. to do something with this. Yeah. Like, and I don't want to yeah. violate my daughter so, who's three. Who's three. So, here you go. Okay. Thank you, Papa. More baby for me. Um, I don't want to turn her into, into a child actor. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't know. If Ryan's Toys is making $25 million, yeah, I mean that. that we just turn that camera off. We have to destroy that camera. We're going to yeah, have to redact, to that, redact that. Um, yeah, I, I, it, it's, it, it feels... I have not made this decision. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm never going to do it. In fact, I've already started posting like photos of Violet here and there. Yeah. You know? So, uh, Teddy, as you saw in the photo there, went to his first football game over the weekend, which was in name only was it a football game. It was a Temple Miami game. 20,000 people in a 70,000 seat stadium. We had club seats. We were able to feed him on the couches. He took his biggest ever poop. Uh, this exact ever. same thing experience that I had in Miami that day. <laughs> Like to a T. Uh, took his biggest ever poop uh, in in the club level. Uh, had some lentil that I think may have been. Oh, good. I'm glad we're expired. reporting this. Yeah. yeah. And so, anyway. No photos, but it you can tell. Yeah, like, let, let me tell you about his poop. No, it, but it took like 30 minutes to clean up. Like, oh. we were in the family family restroom. We had to change him and all that stuff. And I was thinking, like, this could be amazing content. I'm in the link. You know, Eagles fans yeah. could say, yeah, I've, I've, had, I've been in that bathroom before. Right. right. Um, and, uh, and, and I could only do it verbally. I talked about it on my. On my show on Sunday, this, this is football via Omaha Productions, mm. ESPN. Um, and then that's enough of that. Yeah. No more of that. <laughs> I might do it one more time. That's enough. I might do it one more time. I think two is enough. Um, <sighs> but I can't, I thought about those photos becoming public and I just, I'm not going to do it because where do you draw the line? Right, right. Yeah, I, I do have content brain. Dominique Foxworth, our friend, mm -hmm. uh, makes fun of me for this all the time. He asked me what I wanted for my birthday today. I said, I want you to come on my podcast. It's and I said ask. it unironically. Did he though. give it to like, you? Yeah, he agreed. Nice. And now When's he's he bound uh, next week, I think. That's beautiful. Okay, cool. But but truly, like, I can't stop seeing my life through the lens of, like, is this good content? I can't. And I, I hate it, but I also feel like it's an evolutionary. Again, don't, one of those things where I'm like— Don't you think that you would produce good content if that were the case? Oh, I see. <gasps> oh, I see. Kevin's <gasps> problem with Pablo Torre finds out is that this isn't football. <laughs> <gasps> Kevin. Hi. What'd you bring? What did you bring us? What so, did you bring us? I want to uh, preface this by saying I have a huge amount of respect for scammers. Okay. Um, as, a, as a Floridian. As a Floridian, <laughs> the two things <laughs> part of your culture. I feel, it is, it is my culture. I feel like I'm well-versed, like a 10,000-hour theory in dealing with scammers, identifying scammers, not signing anything mm. in the presence of scammers, which is important. Um, also, bar fights. I've seen a lot of bar fights, and I can kind of, within three or four seconds, identify whether or not somebody somebody or something is a problem. I'm really good at that. Um, Where is this that is a hell of a claim, yeah. but proceed. Okay. I'm just really good. I'm just like, and also that would extend to geopolitical issues where I'm always just like, yeah, these guys are mm, not Ukraine. Issue. Yeah, no, or like, one. no, no, I actually did see that one coming. Or like when North Korea is like, oh, we're testing this stuff. It's like, all right, buddy, you're going to talk about it. You're going to do something. Okay. Like yeah. that, that kind of thing. <laughs> sure. You know, you go to enough spring breaks in Daytona Beach, you understand this. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, uh, I, this all this leads to not not the bar fight thing, the scamming, uh, a story in Vox and other places, and other places, and other places, multiple um, sources. It's not an exclusive. So uh, there's a Deloitte survey um, that says that Gen Z Americans are three times more likely to get caught up in an online scam than baby boomers, sixteen percent to five percent, respectively. Now. Mm. There's a couple of things about this. Number one is that um, boomers are sort of branded as people who get caught up in scams. They're, they're not technologically advanced, all of this stuff. What I like about this, and by the way, that's, that's true. Like I had an extended family member who is a, who is a boomer um, get caught up in a scam in the last 
24 months or so. And well, I'll tell you what didn't happen. Nobody in my family was like, I am gobsmacked this happened. Mm. They, everybody was like, yeah, no, no, no. He, that's His homepage is yahoo.com. Yeah, he was just His waiting tracks. around. He was just waiting Damn. around to get scammed. Um, they got him good. I'll say that. They got him good. Um, Damn. So what I like about this it's almost like the scammers. Again, we're pra- all praised to the scammers. Why? It's almost, Why are we praising scammers? Uh, because they're getting it done. Didn't you hear the stats? Yeah. All right. So um, it all reminds right, sure. me a little bit. Because you play to win the game. Yeah. Yeah, That's yeah, why. We're not here to the lose. The whole narrative is that Gen Z, they're just on top of things. They've had the internet since they were three years old. Right. So – you feel like because of the reputation of Gen Z, you'd be afraid to go with them. It's almost like like a top cornerback in football. <laughs> and this happened like famously with like Namdi Asimov, if you remember him. Oh, yeah. Where Raiders. the whole thing when he was with the Raiders was nobody threw at him. Nobody threw at him. Then he goes to the Eagles. People threw at him, and it turns out he was just okay. It was that nobody just tested him in Oakland because it wasn't an issue. You could throw other places. Um, and so the scammers correctly – we're like, we've identified Gen Z as incredibly scammable, and we're going right in. We're going to grab the bull by the horns. It's working, I would say. Um, these numbers are, are That is incredible. surprising to me, admittedly. But the Gen Z can get scammed? Because they're not, not that they can, but that they are at a rate that is in, in far in excess of people who learned about the internet through AOL. I also yeah. just, I think, though, that you're on the internet so much more. That just that numbers wise has to increase your chance of opportunities. Sure. Right. There's more down. chances to touch they just want to, be, to get to them. I agree. They just want to be involved in stuff. Like you ever walk around Soho and there's like a line around the block for something and you think, oh, it must be like, you know, like you shoes get or something. Line? And it's like, it's actually for like a, a coffee. And he's like, what? Right. And it's like, oh, this coffee was on TikTok. And it's like, okay, I, I, I gotcha. know exactly the store you're talking about. I do too. Um, I'm not going to name it. <laughs> because um, you want to shop at that store unironically. I do not. Want, I went in there one day and I was like, this is not for me. And I, I can't even pronounce the name of the that's store. actually why I'm not saying yeah. it. not not for I any promotional reason. Yeah, a, oh, yep. that's um, another that's close. I've never another heard another way to feel very old. I don't yeah, know it's just yeah, it's it's the vibes okay, but there's always a long ass line, and I'm just like okay, I'm just not going to do this. But they're desperate young people. You could get desperate. in that line and scam them. They want absolutely. To belong. These kids yes. need love there's no, so badly. There's no, as we said earlier, there's no monoculture. Right, so they just if 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 the monoculture is just getting thirty thousand dollars lost in some like weird home equity loan scam, that's that's great for them. Um, I think the, the overarching point here, and like I was a history major in college. Okay, you can tell. Um, the that does track that one hundred percent tracks. The one thing that I think is important when you study history is like every generation every person is basically the same right like starting in like 900 you'll read stuff and it's like well this guy is, you might as well just live right now right everybody's aggressively modern there's not really much that's that's new when you and and also like you you read about like abraham lincoln and george washington and they've got like crippling self-doubt and and you, you know it's like every, everybody's that. the same everybody's the same george washington was a nightmare to work with a nightmare Love constantly that. threatening to quit um, just a, a real office. Uh, Damn, I'm gonna tell him you said this. George Washington definitely would have gotten. Uh, what's that thing? Cancelled. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he has been canceled. No, he oh, has yeah, been. Canceled. I think he's done. Yeah, he's, he's so canceled. He's not even around. He's anymore. done. That's yeah, the tea. I was gonna say like Brazilian lip fillers or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He had the wooden teeth thing. Going, yeah, it was a BBL. Well, it wasn't yeah, the yeah, first it was, BBL. <laughs> it was like hippopotamus teeth, right? That's oh right. my god, yeah. for real? That's right. Oh, yeah, it wasn't wooden teeth. No. Hippopot- See, that's oh, history, history major. Christmas. So uh, the point is, by the way, George Washington yeah, is, is, is canceled. Um, yes. But the point is, like, every generation is the same. Every generation is the same. And, like, there's an old George Carlin bit about how, like, everybody says, like, the kids are a future or whatever. And it's like, well, there's probably a bunch of losers in the kid generation just by – Percentage wise, yeah. mostly most mostly a bunch of losers and then a couple of winners. And we had this whole thing where like somehow like the generation below us, Gen Z, became like progressive coded and said so it was like, well, the kids are all right, they're gonna be our future. And it's like now nah. Greta Thunberg. Yeah, exactly. They're all Greta Thunberg. Right. And it's, instead they're just boomers, but they wear <laughs> Amelia <laughs> tiny Andor. Boomers. They're little tiny boomers. And they're getting I don't know. scammed I do think, out of their but college. But I do funds. think I haven't seen, I haven't heard of any Gen Z. Buying gold coins off of a, a uh, cable broadcast. Did you miss the whole NFT thing? Yes, that's oh, number one. Shoot. Yeah, but number- a lot of us did that. That was a lot of us. And I'm looking at you, Jimmy Fallon, whatever the hell that whole <laughs> thing was. It was the most obvious What, what scam. did Jimmy Fallon do? He, Why did he become the face that, of NFTs? That yeah, he, thing. he and Paris Hilton. Again. Oh, oh, damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just yeah, like yeah. so, I've never seen something that was so transparently like, 
hey, this isn't a thing. And everybody was like, you're the idiot. It's a thing. And then so quickly yeah, now they're like, cut to hey, by the way, saying, NFTs um, weren't real and it's done now. And they were a big scam. And everyone's like, what? Crazy. I was once at a bar uh, on the west side and uh, it was like 5 p.m. And, and one of the bartenders was like, uh, hey, last night, they were talking about, hey, Jimmy Fallon and like some other celebrity came in last night and they like manned the bar and everybody was all amped. And I was like, that must have been cool. And he was like, it was a nightmare. I, duh. <laughs> that would be my immediate reaction. That sounds like a nightmare. He laughed at everything. Yeah. Yeah, um, he said while laughing. He was like, "It was not at it everything. Was not cool. It was like 2013 or whatever." Um, so I felt I th- I thought it was cool. I would have been like, "Hey, there's there's Big JF behind the bar. Mm-hmm. That seems Big exciting." Big JF. I'd have been scammed. What, I would have been scammed. Call them. Yeah. I would have been scammed to think it was cool. Um, so anyway, uh, I think that you're gleeful about this statistic, though. Uh, yeah. No, you I, seem like you're well, dunking. But but, but here, here's the difference, right? You say you you haven't heard about. Gen Z getting scammed or whatever. Gold coins. Gold coins, all this stuff. So I think the difference is, is that Gen Z is smart enough, if there's any difference between generations, to now broadcast it, okay? Like my extended family member. Yeah, but they know, they're like, ah, I lost $15,000 on this weird offshore thing, this Mm. investment. I invested in in wind in in Columbia, and that turned out to be a thing. Mm. And, uh, Columbia University, and right. uh, and and uh, now I've lost that money. Um, they're not going to put that on TikTok. All right. mm. I don't know. I think they, they have to are. put their babies on TikTok. Uh, what? How old is Gen Z? Unboxing. Isn't Gen Z nine to? to they're this. like nine years old, old right now. No. Nine to twenty one. Like, nine to twenty two. They're like in college now. How old is Gen Z? That's right. Is what I'm googling. Yes. They are currently between nine and twenty four years. I was old. so close. There are nearly 68 I'm not ta- million I'm talking of them. about the ones that are 21 to 24. Okay, well, you can't just do... That's t- elder... That's elder Z's. Zelders. Elders. The, yeah, you're, spe- you're addressing the culture by talking to their elders. I guess that is respectful. Mm-hmm. But I don't think the nine-year-olds have babies. I could be wrong. I don't know what's going on out I'm not, there I'm nowadays. Not, I'm not on TikTok. Um, but uh, <laughs> but uh, the nine-year-olds are getting scammed, for sure. I, uh, they're nine. Yep. They're nine. They're nine. They're probably dragging down the stats, to be honest. It's probably like the nine, <laughs> 10, 11, 12 scams. that are like Unboxing just clicking scams. on those things. They're also spending a bunch of their parents' money on like buyable downloads. Oh, yeah. on oh that's true. Video I, mean, games. Maybe if, I mean, if Is we're counting like when somebody gets, to, gets their parents' credit card and puts them on like Robux. that's dragging the or, whole uh, gen down. Or like um, what's the EA Sports thing, the Ultimate Team stuff, where oh. like, people spend like $11,000 <gasps> just to get what? Just, Truly, eleven. I mean, a lot of money just to get like, uh, like Harry Kane. He's one of our own. He is one of our own, but he's also expensive. An ultimate team. That's I, a scam. Uh, That's I, a scam. Harry I, Kane is, scam. is a scam. Whoop. What? I'm a, I'm a Tottenham fan. Controversy. You have so many I'm hot takes. Fan. I forget that you're at ESPN now. I like him a lot. It was a joke, but no, he's yeah, a Bayern Munich kidding. now, and now we're winning. It's addition it by subtraction. We scammed Bayern Munich. Harry Kane. Love you, Harry. Um, Thirty he years old. He doesn't love you. 30 years 30 old. 30 years yeah. old. Yep, yep. Um, I clicked on an email. I still have an ESPN email account that I never log into. And I opened it recently, and I clicked on a link in an email, mm-hmm. and I was notified that I had just fallen yes. for a Disney-orchestrated yes. scam. Pablo, yes. Be- you fell for the fake Wait scam. A That's a scam Wait a scam. Wait a second. Wait a I second. failed the test. So the this is like test. at the airport when like once a year they put through the fake bombs at TSA. Yes. And they're like all You got them secret got choppered into a f- scam. <laughs> That's right. That's what right. was the undercover CEO show? I got the undercover boss. Undercover yeah, boss. Undercover boss. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jimmy Pitaro jumped out of the screen and was like, you did not do any of the webinars. Mm-hmm. And that was accurate. I felt ashamed. You should. And I actually feel, I feel uh, secondhand embarrassed. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you got do you want to cut this out? No. Kind of. No, I want to move it to the front. Um Ugh. I why what what, what why did, did you say? click on it? What yeah, did the link that, what yeah, was what the, did it how did they entice you? I don't want to say. Oh, I no. do. Oh no. I do. Now you oh, must. No. Now you must. <laughs> it was a link to a thing and I was like Oh, oh, this is like, it, it was, it was um, a password phishing scam. Where sure, it was but like, what was the link, Pablo? You know how they could have gotten me? And I'm maybe this say. is what happened to you, is that they did that, like, you're overdue for your compliance training. <laughs> like, on this, like, they send you that <laughs> email every that. day. Every day, ESPN sends you that Let's say, email. do you know that uh, the Ringer people used to get, maybe they still do, um, there's a, we have a famous boss, and there are people who would pose as him in phishing scams. They'd be like, hey, 
like, uh, click on this link. And I'd be like, that. I doubt my famous boss would have said Why that are we email. anonymizing Bill Simmons? Yeah, what? I'm tr- I don't know. I, just, I, like, I talk it's about Bunny. Weird. You got to talk about Bill. Everybody knows his name. <laughs> I, it's a, it was weird emails we would get. Weird phishing emails. Yeah, I felt like, It would be like I, I your photos are ready. And yes. it's like... Bill, yes. Bill's always texting me that. Bill's always like, no, your photos email, are Also <laughs> email, which he doesn't even use for, for that kind of stuff. And he's and He's always like, BBMing me about my photos being ready. <laughs> It's Blackberry Messenger. The kids have no idea what that it's a is. Brazilian butt messenger. <laughs> we didn't get scammed. Yeah, did we? Did how do millennials do in this poll? Do we get scammed? Uh, we've never been scammed. Never a been scammed. Has never been Congratulations. Scammed. We just eat avocado toast and can't afford homes. Can I tell you the actual time I got scammed that I, I don't even know if I want to put this on tape? I'm ready. Truly. Have you I ever was, been scammed? Because I don't think I have, but I... If I, I, you guys I, I don't trust anybody. Scams, yeah, me neither. Then but this I, is incredibly vulnerable. I believe that I, if you told me that I had, I'd go, that sounds right. But I can't think right now of an example of so, when it's happened. I'm a native New Yorker, right? I'm walking here. Sure, yeah. I see it. Very I plausibly yep. thing that I say. Mm-hmm. So I was walking here uh, down Fifth Avenue one night. I was fact-checking at Sports Illustrated. Literally checking facts. This occurs oh, to me no. now that oh, that was no. my job. I'm checking facts. Oh, you're distracted. I'm walking down Fifth Avenue. And this Italian guy, and I, I hate to racialize him, but this is key to the story. He is in a car, and his trunk is open. And he's like, I'm not going to do the accent because oh I God. can't. Oh, Don't my God. And Katie is Don't Italian, so I can't do it. Thank you. Um, Katie can do it. <laughs> Katie can do it. Um, so he says, uh, you know, excuse me, excuse me, sir. Um, hey, buddy. That's what it would probably <laughs> sound like. <laughs> we'll translate. He's like, I'm headed to the airport right now. I can't pay. Oh yeah. I oh, can't pay the fee on this trunk of high-end leather jackets that I have. Oh my God! How did you fall Pablo, for this, dude? How did you fall? For this? I don't even want to tell the story. Almost literally falling out the back of a this truck. Is, this is actually. Oh my God! I'm cringing on my own. Behalf I know. Why here. don't you just let him? Let's let him get through it really fast. So he's like, "Hey." um... Do you want any of these? I'm, I'm oh trying to get rid of them at discount. Oh my god! It's like 10 p.m. Oh my god! Like 10, oh my god. 10 p.m. How old are you? It's like after the market's closed. Exactly. Are closed. I'm 24 years old. I know at one point I'm going to feel self-conscious about competing with Kevin Clark in a jacket okay, off, and I'm like, did- F- so I say to him, and this is true, I say to him, I, I don't have cash on me, man. Sorry, and I try to leave, and he's like, "There's a bank right oh, there." Oh, how my convenient. God. You went I, I went, into I the went, bank. I went to a second location. You oh my what? God. Did you I wanted, go? I wanted this jacket. Was it that was nice of a jacket? What was the brand? So I go oh to the no. bank. It was Cole I go to the bank. <laughs> I go to the bank. I withdraw. I think it was like $130. Good oh discount. My God. That's what I said. It's I was like, discount. I, processing, fact checking. Yep, that sounds like a discount. And I take out the money and I give it to this guy. And he hands me this, like, brown leather jacket. And I take it home, and I'm like, I f***ing did it. Like, this, what a deal. And immediately I get home. And, of course, this is just, like, levels upon levels of, of naivete. I try it on. It doesn't really fit that well. I'm like, f***. You didn't even do that before. No. Jackets are not hard to try he on. He was moving me on. Jacket he was, goes over He was hustling like, me along. He's like, I got to go to the oh, airport right now. Come on. Let's, oh, you gotta. my God. The so it, airport with a at 10 PM, trunk full of yes. you taking a red All eye? All of this is accurate. This is, none of this is exaggerated. God damn. So I... I You're the dumbest person I've it's ever not, met. It's not good, Kevin. It's not good. I don't think it's going to get better. And, of course, what I do is I'm like... And then... I sit down on my couch. Oh, no. And I'm like... The color transferred? I, I'm just like, let me just check something. And I Google leather jacket scam. What? And I see in a message board thread exactly what happened to me, complained about by other people. And I'm like, okay, I'm an idiot. Mm-hmm. I, That's true. I threw out the jacket. But you paid for it. It was already a sunk cost. Just keep it. You think I wanted that reminding yeah. me that I did this? I mean, it's a good reminder so that every day you don't make that same mistake. Every time you shrug that ugly I thing over your shoulders, I have not talked about this to literally anybody. Every time you pull your until, arm in difficultly, the, you'll go, don't, not getting scammed today. But you can't bend your arm that much, so you just go, not getting scammed today. You, you know what was even worse? The jacket was too big. Oh, oh my God, God, too big. I was like a child at that swimming point, in this fake-ass jacket. Did it go over jacket. his finger? Yeah, 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 yeah. It went over his At fingers. that point, you just have to gain weight. Yeah. And just justify <laughs> the whole thing. bulk up, it's jacket season. 
Holy cow, I, Pablo! That's like a cartoon. That's a cartoon it's, it's, scam. I, 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 there's no way to spin this. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday! I had a roommate in college who. We have to get you a leather jacket, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> no. A brown leather. Have you ever owned a brown <laughs> this is leather be jacket? PTSD. Yeah, for real. I had a roommate in college who uh, was like, you know, this was 2000. It was not in college. It was right after college. We moved to New York City. So it was 2009. And uh, t- jobs were tough to come by. Mm-hmm. And we had all moved to the city to this like fake third bedroom where she they had put up a fake wall. And this mm-hmm. girl lived in this tiny yeah, room. I know this. And she was like, I need to get a job. And she wanted to be on Broadway. But uh, uh, that dream fizzles very quickly when you're in, there's no rent. And so she was like, I just need to get a job. There, so she there found, are plays on Broadway about rent. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, she found a um, Craigslist post about this job. I think it was going to be babysitting kids or something. And she... There was just, the, the way I found out about this, we were leaving the apartment mm-hmm. and I was like, she was like, oh, I'll come with you. I have to go to the bank. And so I was like, what are you going to the bank for? You don't have any money. You haven't paid rent in two months. And she was like, I'm going to go to the, uh, because this, I got this job. They just need me to send them. They accident, they sent me it too much. They sent me my first check, but they sent too much. And so I just have to send them back um, a couple hundred. And I was like, when did that check get there? When did that get into your account? She was like, yesterday. I was like, do not do this. That check's going to bounce, and then you're just going to be negative however much money they're making you send back. And she was like, you don't trust anybody. I don't like how your story is about how you guys are good at avoiding scams. Not even my own. It was happening to somebody else. Yeah. And I was like, that's clearly— Because my, here's my first instinct is always— what are you trying to get out of this? <laughs> my first instinct is this doesn't feel like, you know a, like this isn't a normal is, behavior. So what is I try to find the scam in everything. And it is annoying because sometimes people are just not scamming you. My instinct is cool jacket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you didn't even try it on. You That's how cool it was. What I think is that you paid a hundred and whatever dollars because 30. you felt bad. So because you, you didn't want to say no to this to Italian guy. You That's didn't want it to lonely, be uncomfortable. You were lonely in New York City. It's an isolating city. And you were just like, I want to give $130 no, to feel it's connected that you to the didn't city. Want to this say is no. even more embarrassing. It's people pleasing. I think. I think it's people pleasing. All right, pleasing. we're done. This is, act, that's, I think. We could I don't do think I'm coming back to this, but I don't think I'm going to be invited back. Unfortunately, for like I, Katie and I just have stopping scamming stories, and you <laughs> yeah. have seems like maybe an endless pile of being scammed. You're going to come back because I'm going to want to make you happy. <laughs> yes, yes. Surround yourself with people pleasers. All right. So we end every show. Oh, yeah. We're saying what we learned. And every time. We say what it is that we found out today on Pablo Torre Finds Out. Mm. I will start because I found out um, that I shouldn't have told that story. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. I was going to say, I found out I'm smarter than Pablo at one thing. And it's scams. It's not everything, but it's 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 one more than I thought when I came in today. It's a pretty large topic. Yeah, I, it it's out. pretty pivotal, too. Found out. We're in downtown Manhattan. I have to get to LaGuardia, but I cannot pay the fees oh, on f- leather you. jackets. And I need to just, if you could, there's a bank right downstairs. Kevin Clark is not coming back. Yes on the jackets or no? Okay. <laughs> I think we're done. Can we end it? <laughs> <laughs> Pablo, what the f***? I know! Pablo, what I the f***? I investigate stories now. You I had fact the, check the things. excuse. You had no cash on you. I know. Pre uh, pen, know. Pa- uh, PayPal. It was pre any of that. <laughs> you could have walked away. What's most embarrassing is that when Kevin was saying, I have to go to LaGuardia, I was like, oh, he has to go. He has to catch a flight? Yeah, me too. I really <laughs> I did not catch too. on. Everybody in the other room is laughing. I did not catch on until like three beats in. I was like, oh. This has been Pablo Torre Finds Out, a Meadowlark Media production. And I'll talk to you next time.